this, this is a little bit beyond uh, the finance bill. Mm -hmm. Just looking at the predictability and the uncertainty of, of our tax regime. Mm -hmm. Do we need to have, and, and, and you're a CPA, you understand these matters very well, do we need to have a finance bill every year? Because the challenge that it poses is that investors shy off because they just don't know a new tax might come in and disrupt your business or worse yet, yes. run you out of business. Yes, we need to, Do we have, need to have a financial bill I need to take you to Article 221 of the Constitution. Because that, it's an amendment, yeah. by the way. No, no, first of all, in the Constitution, it provides that there is no budget expenditure that will be tabled without the revenue side in it. Right. Uh, gentlemen, uh, um, a, little bit, a little bit of reprieve. Things have gotten so heated, right, within this studio. And I feel like we need a moment to just breathe. And, you know, remember why we're even talking about this in the first place. The main beneficiary of all of this is, of course, the common Mwana Inchi. And we're going to be looking at a few things that have been proposed, you know, and a few things that have been cut from this particular uh, finance bill, a very contentious bill, of course. And as we consider some things, of course, there are some things that have been cut. For example, the 16% uh, the 16 percent VAT on bread, excise duty on edible oil, VAT on transportation of sugar has been removed, 2.5% motor vehicle tax has been dropped, the eco levy on locally manufactured goods have been removed, ETIMS has been receded for MSMEs of who have a turnover below 1 million shillings, excise duty imposed on imported table eggs, onions and potatoes, to of course help local manufa manufacturers and of course, you know, some of the people who are producing it within the country. And there's no increase in mobile money transfer, VAT on financial services, foreign exchange transactions have also been removed. And as we continue to see, of course, what remains is that there is going to be the digital marketplace tax on ride hailing services, food delivery services, freelance services, professional services, rental services, and tax-based services, and any other service that is not exempt from tax under this act. And this, of course, is anything that is being traded on the digital space. 